Hi, my name is Carrie Jelonen, and I'm happy to share my way of life project for the end of our class here at the Seattle School. I did a project for my way of life, and um, I want to show it to you and talk you through why I did the things that I did here. Uh, it was important to me that my way of life statement or project not be prescriptive, meaning uh, do this, do that, uh, action-based. Uh, I need for myself in this time of life a flexibility and a fluidity for what my spirituality looks like. I want to show you some of the books that were really meaningful to me from this course and read a couple of the quotes that informed my thinking on this project. Um, the first one was The Altar in the World by Barbara Brown Taylor. And one of the things that she says in the intro is that all we lack is the willingness to imagine that we already have everything we need. The only thing missing is our consent to be where we are. So a lot of the things that are on my way of life project that you'll see are practices or things that are in place in my life already, or things that um, aren't maybe in my life on a daily basis, but at least on a regular basis. These are the things that I would come back to for rejuvenation or um, fulfillment. The other um, book that really resonated with me and I believe had something to say very similarly to that is uh, The Soul's Slow Ripening. And I'm not done with this book yet and I'm really happy to say that because I typically um, devour books very quickly. And um, this one really implores you in the introduction to take time with it, even maybe up to a year to look at the 12 practices and I would love to, to do that. That's what I hope to do is take some time with this one. But one of the things that Christine Paintner says in the introduction of this book that resonated and felt to me very similar to what Barbara Brown Taylor was saying is that practices are a way of embodying the spiritual journey rather than merely thinking about it. And so I've spent a lot of time, I think, in my life thinking too much about my faith and, and locking it up for me mentally uh, when really so much of it is going on already in my life. And I love that uh, the Way of Life Project has given me the opportunity to see where I already am um, doing things and in communion with the divine in ways that are beautiful and um, very nuanced and natural and, and everyday things. Um, that has really been very powerful to me. The last book that I would mention, it uh, wasn't on the list of reading, but Pat mentioned it uh, during the week on pilgrimage. And this is Esther DeWall's um, To Pause at the Threshold. And it is just a little book, but I am on my third time through this book in under a week. Um, like I said, I, I typically tend to, to devour them, but this one in particular, um, Thresholds and Liminality, is a really powerful and fascinating concept for me. It's where um, I base a lot of my writing work. So this was really powerful to me. And, and the thing that I would say that Esther says in this book that really informed my project is that the Celtic mindset says that we are grounded and free to explore both and. And so to me, what I tried to do here in this project was give an image for um, around my core self. I have these mindsets that inform the way that I approach things. And so for me, these things are very grounding to me. They're very important to me. Um, a lot of them you might um, perhaps have the insight have come from my trauma background and that's why they're so important to me now. Um, and so empathy, voice, agency, and play are these core concepts to me that, that really ground me and center me and which I hope inform 
the way that I approach the rest of these things in my life. So the practices and the seven areas that I think they naturally organized themselves into, um, which I love that it ended up being seven. That wasn't purposeful, but I thought it was significant. Um, so just reading around the wheel. Um, connection is really important to me. Um, family, friends, and then moving out concentrically from there, right? Community, um, therapy. Therapy really should be my connection, maybe even in front of family and friends. It's that one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, really earned attachment that is so, so, so significant to me. And then proximity to other is something that um, you guys might, of course, recognize from Ron Ruthruff's um, themes that he's so passionate about and, and I love that I've had the opportunity to read on and learn about. And I think it's really important to me to include that in the section on connection. And, and because relationships shouldn't always be with um, just my, my inner circle, right? I don't want to just be in an echo chamber. Uh, I'm going to go <laughs> this way around the circle because I think these things need to be said in order. So um, I will say that curiosity is a practice that's important to me. And I felt like that that was a, uh, the best way to maybe encompass these things that I do naturally. Learning, reading, observing, listening. Movement is important to me. Um, I'm in a place in life where I am finally loving myself well enough to give myself the freedom to not um, think of movement as punishment um, for not being as fit or healthy as uh, society says I should be. Uh, so movement right now for me is about great joy and feeling good in the way that God designed my body. And walking, yoga, swimming, breathing, qigong, these things are all very um, gentle and enjoyable to me. And I want to remember to weave those into my life. Sacred space is really important to me. I thought it was funny that the one place I kind of, if you will, um, you know, we could call it mess up on my piece of art was um, I misspelled liminal, which I just thought, well, I don't know what the significance of that is yet, but it's a very important concept to me, and, and I misspelled it at first, so it is what it is. But um, sacred spaces are really important to me. I have a special space where I do my writing every morning. I have a special space where I do my coffee time, which we talked about in class. Um, those are spaces that I meditate in. Um, pilgrimage is something I would say is a practice that I've added um, I think I've done before without realizing it and want to include it with more um, purpose here and um, sit spot which is again maybe just another um, word for sacred space. Um, nature is really important to me and getting out in creation. For me I have proximity to woods and water and those are the places that really naturally draw me in anyway. Um, the water areas I have are very open and expansive and the woods to me are very um, cozy and um, and encapsulating, right? Like I feel surrounded in the woods, I feel more open in the water, and I think there's really good purpose in both of those places. Um, seasons and cycles are really powerful concepts to me, as well as moon phases. Those are all things that I'm very drawn to and um, resonate with me. So I thought that was um, good to put on this. And then uh, creating is really important to me. It's really one of the ways that I feel... Um, rejuvenated, like I fill my tank back up when I'm uh, creating. And most of the ways that I more commonly create are, um, well, painting uh, a little bit and writing uh, pottery. And then in my home, I really feel like what I do with food and decor is also creating for me, or at least it elicits those same um, feelings in me. And then co-creating, which I think is a way that um, I really uh, feel like the creator, the divine, and I get to together um, touch and um, help and bring forth things that um, have life in them outside. And that's really exciting to me. So gardening, landscaping, rewilding, 
And I would even, um, you know, I added at the last minute, uh, I had finished this and I picked it back up and added self because I believe that um, the divine gives me choice and agency. Again, those things that inform how I how I approach each of these practices. And, and I believe that um, myself is being co-created by the two of us as I mature and grow and and become more informed and experienced and, and go along in life. So I, um, I hope that my empathy informs my connection, my creating, my um, engagement with nature and sacred spaces, my movement, my curiosity. I hope my voice and my agency are things that I use in each of these areas and I hope that play is a part of how I approach each of these things that that play to me isn't just one of these isolated practices or activities but I want to experience play as I move and I want to experience play as I create I want to experience play when I'm in nature and so these are ways to me that like I've said inform the rest of those and around the outside you can see that I've put prayers and communion and I wanted to not again like I did with play I didn't want prayer and communion with the sacred to be something um, that was an action or a practice because to me again that feels prescriptive and so the reason I put it on the outside was because I hope that prayer and communion is woven through my experience with each of these things. Um, I hope that it's something that happens as I'm moving my body and as I'm creating and as I'm connecting in relationship. And then finally, I really see um, the kingdom of God as something that is not an eventuality, but as something that is a is a way of life, and is something that God calls us to when He says, um, "Love me and love other people." Um, so I have put across the top here that this is this is the kingdom of God to me. This is um, my here and now that I believe speaks to the fullness of life with the divine. I uh, wanted to make this and, and talk to you about it today because it's October 31st and of course this week is Samhain or how I've always read it in my head, Samhain. <laughs> so I'm really thankful to Pat for giving me the proper pronunciation of that in the last class or uh, what the Christian tradition became um, All Saints day and um, this time of the year one of the things that I really learned in a lot of the reading that I did is um, really such a, a spiritual time and and I didn't realize until reading the Esther DeWall book that this is a, considered a spiritual new year in um, ancient Celtic tradition and so I love that I am able to set this way of life on this spiritual new year because to me I am setting intention for how I want to live for uh, the next year and then hopefully this can become a tradition or a practice that I revisit at this time of year. Thank you for including me in the conversations in this class. It has been very fulfilling and I'm excited to uh, see what the rest of you create as well.